So here you can see a rendering of uh, the Spectratone Red body. And I want to point out that this is the actual titanium or stainless steel section. And if you look close here, you can see I've got this uh, kind of transparent color inside the ribs of Spectratone Red titanium and stainless. And that needs to be processed in a different type of software. So this is Inventor, which I designed it in, and uh, it will be processed in another piece of software, the one that I always talk about, that is the topology software uh, that does the lattice structures and the other finite element analysis uh, work. And this software actually can do some of that, but not nearly as much as that one. Now what we have here is the stainless steel or titanium um, body. So you can see that's what it would look like. And I did remove some material on it. So really what I'm looking for here is to make this as lightweight and as little material as possible. So technically what I'm gonna do is isolate this part right here. Um, and let me just move it around. So you can see that is the inner sleeve of the body. And then the other section that's attached to it are the actual ribs on the outside. So you can think of these almost as three different pieces, even though it'll all be printed as one. So this body that I'm going to highlight now, that will be the first piece. And I'm going to run it through topology software so that that piece becomes um, a lattice structure all of its own. It will be designed, incorporated with a Boolean union to the rib section. So I'll highlight that. And the rib section will be solid, except for these little holes that you see I've put in there already. These little hole sections here, those are going to stay uh, just the way they are. And then the rest of it, the, the filled in yellow sections are going to be another lattice topology. So lattice on the actual first body section and lattice inside the ribs the ribs will be solid. And then the last piece, really to add contrast and to uh, also just make this a lot more fun and interesting and intricate and design, uh, really it's designed for the future so that I can create other cool variations of this, is going to be the nylon uh, cover. That's what I'm calling it anyhow, as a nylon cover. Uh, I could come up with another name, but you can see here that that section here is all printed out of nylon. Now the issue is with the titanium and the nylon, those additive manufacturing techniques require around a millimeter thick of the wall. So the wall, if it's less than a millimeter thick, it may not print properly. And I'll show you here, this is one of our tuning slides and it was 3D printed out of nylon. And uh, this one is a little less than a millimeter thick. So I printed it the same thickness as our normal tuning slides, and it did print just fine, even though a lot of the manufacturers that are doing this work for us are telling us we can't go any thinner than a millimeter. This one is actually a few thousandths less than that. So I'm hoping we can make all of this work and be printed uh, successfully. I've already tried thinner designs, and the reason you guys haven't seen me holding uh, perfect components yet is because we're still in the prototyping phases of this part. Spectratone Red in terms of its playability and its feasibility and its production uh, process, all of that is done in brass. So we have the brass version and all the internal components are exactly the same as the brass version. Um, the only parts that need to be finished is this. And I would be holding some parts and showing them to you except when I designed this the last couple times, it had flaws uh, where the parts were too thin, it couldn't be printed, and it broke. And it broke before they could even send it to me. So that's why I'm showing you the renderings again. Um, now, we, we believe we'll probably have this problem solved today um, because I've already done the work and I've thickened everything, and this nylon structure actually has thicker ribs in it to bring it in over a millimeter on the ends. So this cross section here is over a millimeter and that one is less than a millimeter. That one is less again, but they don't span very far. So it probably is going to work. Now let me show you how all this slides together. This actually, you can see I'll um, kind of rotate it a little bit. 
it's gonna slide together and stop right there. So when it stops, then the end is flush and the 5mm or Spectratone nut screws onto here and then the whole thing fits together. Remember, inside this will actually be a brass body. So it is hybrid and I should say it's quite complicated in terms of, of a design, but it goes together very simply. And that's what we want, is we want it to be a simple solution. Um, and once we have the topology designed in here, then we'll be able to see the whole thing as a rendering. And uh, you know we don't really need to see that as a rendering because we'll probably have the parts here next week. So, and I wanna show you, I did render this, um, Let's see if I can zoom out far enough. I rendered it on a road. So you can see here, essentially what I've done is um, I took the actual lighting effects of the sunrise in Arizona and I rendered it right on the blacktop. And that's, that's what we're looking at here. Uh, but that lighting looks really cool and that's mainly why I did it that way. Um, but you can see how it all fits together now. So this slides onto that and then the nut holds it all together and i do think that we are probably going to um, keep these assemblies loose at least for now so they can slip together it may be that this one is bonded with the brass underneath when we ship it but i believe this one may actually be loose i'll keep you guys updated if we decide to change that for any reason then uh, you will hear about it so that is what the entire Assembly looks like at this very moment, and I should say today is December 11th. Uh, it's Monday, and the previous iterations that you've seen, you can tell they're very similar. This is more refined. It's going to be lighter and more efficient. And we're trying to bring the cost of this down enough to where um, it's affordable or more affordable for people to order. Because right now, uh, the cost that's on the backer kit is actually the true cost of what it will, will cost to, to make these. So um, it's like $100 extra to make them out of titanium over stainless steel. And that's actually considered a really good deal. Um, I found some vendors that would only print this for $600. That was the lowest I could get it if I ordered 100 um, for just one. Uh, but it really depends on which vendor you work with and how busy they are and their production schedules. And if you get in at the right time, you can get a better deal. And that's what we're trying to do. So. Hopefully that helps you guys understand what we're doing um, with the topology software. And I do want to show you a couple parts that were actually printed. So this one is printed out of steel. And this is our new momentum spinning top. So uh, this has features that are less than a millimeter also. And uh, because it's steel, it's fairly heavy. If I did this in titanium, it would be around half the weight. Uh, this one here is actually in titanium. So that gives you an idea of the color and what titanium looks like. And uh, that is quite a bit lighter, also because the design was, was uh, a design that has less material in it. And here we have one that was printed in aluminum. And you can see, again, the topology software, when I set it up the way I wanted it, it actually created some really cool effects, and it's extremely strong, and uh, these these could be utilized in trumpet designs. This one, um, if it were a surface texture, it could actually add quite a bit of efficiency without adding much weight, especially if we had a cross member, and uh, that's easy to do. And this one would actually add a lot more efficiency, even in, uh, in any material, really, even nylon. Um, and I want to show you a couple other components. Uh, so this one was actually a bottle opener, and we're going to be offering... Uh, you know, generative uh, topology optimized products on our Kickstarter page, and we are going to offer some cool bottle openers. This is one of the coolest ones I've ever seen. It's so strong, like you can stand on it. It's so strong. And uh, it uses very little material, so it doesn't cost as much to print. And uh, you can see the bottle opener would mechanism would be right there. And this is one of the coolest ones that I've ever seen. Uh, a company that we got quotes for uh, purchasing a 3D printer printed this for us and it is a titanium leaf and you can see inside there a very fine network of 
um, I guess, leaf veins, if you want to think of it as leaf, but a structure. It's a topology uh, lattice structure, and it is very, very strong. Like, literally, I would probably have to work very hard to break this. And I'm not sure if it would bend or break, but considering uh, I don't think there are many of these in the world, I'm not going to break it. Um, and here's one more you can see. This is a bottle opener. And again, using topology software, this one wasn't printed with as refined of a printing mesh. So this printer probably didn't perform as well. And it might just be because of the way they oriented it or the settings. It probably could have been as fine as the last one you saw. Also very, very strong. And that would be your lever mechanism there. And the last one I wanna show you today, I have many more, is this. And this is an exhaust manifold. Uh, that looks really, really crazy. Um, it's printed out of aluminum, and this one you can see right inside it. Each one of those ports um, diverges right here, and it is there are no supports in this. It is free form, just tubes. It's just an amazing part. And you're starting to see what we can do with topology software. And this one uses no topology software in it. Actually, that's just a freeform design, but all the others do. And um, yeah, hopefully that gives you guys an idea of where we're headed.